this is Sheila Barker and welcome to Studio in Kaminati. I'm the executive director. Uh, today I'm going to begin a series in which we get to meet the fellows of Studio in Kaminati. And our first guinea pig, brave <laughs> and courageous, is Scott Boyack. Um, Scott, will you tell us a little bit, very briefly, about how you came to Studio in Kaminati, maybe what choices were influential in deciding to come here? Sure, sure. So I'm a second career artist, so I had a career and I've always had an interest in art and I did things at my local community center, but I wanted to be even better, so I wanted to do more stuff. So I started coming to open studios here, met some of the students, and that kind of brought me in. And then I enrolled, geez, it was six years ago. And then I started part-time. And then with the pandemic, things kind of got messed up a little bit, took me six years. Uh, and then here I am now as a fellow. So, uh, yeah. Well, I'm able to look around at the walls and to see the kind of work you've done here. Is all of this from the classrooms? Are some of these uh, classroom? Um, these are almost creations. all things that we did in various levels and, and classes. So the curriculum here takes you through everything. I mean, you start out doing things in charcoal, then you move to black and white paint, and then you move to a limited palette, uh, and then finally you start doing things with natural light where you open up the window and you have a full color palette. So all those things. Uh, were from one year with students in a class. Do you have favorite models? You know, I love all our models. So I, as you know, I was the model coordinator for three of the years I was here, and that was one of the greatest experiences. I got to meet all the different models, and it's just exciting to hear all their backgrounds, all the different kind of things they do, and as soon as they're posing for you, you're inspired. So from the outside, I can see where you might look at it and say, oh, I wouldn't want to paint that person, I wouldn't want to paint that person. It doesn't matter. When we're painting, you know, whoever the current model is, they're great. I have a question for you in regard to what's going on right here. Sure. You're using artificial light for your still life. Yes. Well, I am still kind of in the process of experimenting with different things. So this particular one, I'm still setting up and playing with, and the past few I did with natural light in here. And of course the challenge with natural light is that it changes during the day. And we just hit daylight savings, so uh -huh. I'm thinking there's gonna be reduced time. So I wanted to try one with almost all artificial light to see how that goes, because maybe that'll be a time saver here in the winter. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's really frustrating it like, you know, Classes end at 4.30, and right around 3 or 3.30 in the middle of the winter, it starts getting dark, and it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. So this is a, a winter strategy to artificial light? Uh, potentially. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing, I mean, you, you are always experimenting, so it's still, I don't think you ever stop learning. Um, well, thank you, uh, Scott, and I'm going to allow uh, Dan Malman, who is our Dean of recruitment to ask some of his questions. He's got uh, more of a professional uh, perspective on this than I do because he's a product of Studio Incominati as well. That's true, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, also, I'm the director of operations, but I'm also a graduate of the program and now I'm working in the office. And uh, yeah, if you don't mind, if I could just ask you a couple things. Might be a little bit technical. Um, I mean, I'm looking at this piece right here. I know I sort of talked to you about it, um, I don't know when that was, maybe last week, and I knew this model, and I mean, and it's Lauren, right? Laura. Laura. Yeah. Laura. Um, obviously, I don't know her that well, but I mean, her personality is sort of something that you can't really miss, and this sort of, <clears throat> it very much sort of feels like her in, in a, I don't know why, but something jumps out at me. Like, yep. I, was there, why is that? Is there something that you talk to her about? Be like, all right, take a pose, or was there, how's the, how does that come to fruition? Because I can imagine there would be a time where, all right, model takes a pose, and you're like, sure, it could be anybody, but this really feels like this model. Yep, 
So you're right, she exudes personality and, and she actually isn't a model now. She modeled for us before the pandemic. Right. And I just always kept in touch and I said, she's got so much character. When I get to the point where I'm doing thesis or afterwards, I want to paint her. So I just dialed her up and said, are you interested in doing some poses? And uh, I had her come in and, and we had a number of ideas that we went through. So I, I have other poses from her that I would like to work on too. And this was just the first one that we were gonna tackle. And one of the things, I mean, obviously the, the gesture is, is really interesting in here. One of the things that she liked, and I like to work with models to see what you know appeals to them too, is that she likes the difference between, uh, you know, just sort of the, you know, like the concept of the poisonous frog, where you have beauty, but then you have danger. Yeah. And so she, cool. on her <laughs> own, does kickboxing. So yeah. that's what she does to, to exercise and to train. And so it's not developed yet, but what you see here is she's wearing some of the fabrics that she created, but then also... Yeah, she's a designer too, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're highlighting, highlighting some of her... Uh, fashion design, but she's in the process of taking off her boxing glove, and this is the tape around her hands that's, you know, piling up on the floor, so Very it's cool. beauty and danger <laughs> at the same time, spark! <laughs> um, and I guess there was just one other piece that, when I was walking around, that sort of jumped out at me, um, and this down here, I mean, this feels, this is very advanced, it definitely feels like um, a mature painter that's gone through the program, but, uh, I mean, just going through, I'll get out of the light a little bit, but the different light sources that are coming in here and yeah. then how you were able to handle that. Obviously there's sort of like a pink light coming in here and then a cooler light coming in there. Um, and obviously you wouldn't have been able to do this. One, no one could in the beginning of the training, but somehow after it goes through, you sort of make something that's extremely complicated look sort of simple um, <laughs> is there that's a whole lot to sort of unpack but yeah I mean, it really jumps off the page to me this one uh, was very hard because it is you're right I had a, a, a red light coming up from the bottom but then what was coming in from the side was the window so it was natural light right, 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 okay. and so on days when it was bright out that dominated the scene and on days when it was dark the red light dominated the scene and so I had to just mentally take notes and make the things that I wanted stand out. And that's kind of what we learn in, in a lot of the color study with natural light is that it's the relationship that's key. Yeah. So as long as you maintain the right relationships, you can make the whole thing uh, work. Yeah, that's interesting. And also, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, every, I've seen it maybe like a dozen times now, but even as I'm looking at it now, I'm always drawn to this and it sort of sucks me in. But now that I'm looking at it and I have to talk about it, <laughs> I'm actually looking at some of these other elements that are sort of bubbling up. And that, that's sort of, I never really thought about it, that's sort of an interesting thing about painting, right? Where there'll, there'll be some part, if it's sitting on your wall long enough, you start to see other things that yeah. are in there. Um, and I didn't even think about the, the Buddha, obviously. I, I would sort of focus on the Gatana and the Delph. Um, just, I don't know why. Um, but that's just sort of an interesting thing that's jumping out at me now. Yeah, the, the, the dove really stands out, and I kept him. He's in my, my studio over here, so. <laughs> it, it's a rock dove, so I've named him Rocky. So that's, that's Rocky the dove. And uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's one of the fun things that you get to explore later in the program is moving your eye around a painting. And you can do that by you know, making an edge sharper than another edge or contrasting colors, but then that is what gives a painting a secondary depth. Right. Because when you first look at it, if that's, if that's, you see everything at that point, then you're done. Yeah. But if you look at it and then all of a sudden you look at it again, then you look at it again and you keep seeing different things, that's the interesting part. That's great. Yeah, and I guess we're winding down, but if I could just talk to you about this one also. I mean, this feels very classic. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I'm looking at sort of some of the soft edges around here. Um, I mean, the whole thing just sort of like exudes sort of like a classical painting. Um, even the structure, where it is, where you put some of these things. Um, yep. I don't know, it's sort of just an interesting contrast between this, which is sort of 
um, feels like there's a lot more stuff sort of going in um, and you're making a lot more decisions and this is sort of very classic and beautiful sort of just in a different way. Um, so I don't know, this my mind just sort of went to this also. Um, well, that was level two when, when I was still more basic. So I kept things simple <laughs> and this one was last year. I so it was an evolution of ability being able to integrate more things into a painting. And I think when you start out, you start thinking of, here's an object in the center of the canvas and that's what I'm gonna paint. <laughs> right, yeah. And that, and even though that's classic, it still is kind of that. There's a bottle and some, some lemons kind of yeah. in the center. Scott, if I can ask you a final question sure. to kind of sum up this interview. Uh, how would you uh, describe your goals for your fellowship and what's left for you to accomplish in the spring semester? I think it's like a 20 year of what you have to accomplish. Uh, you know, fellowship is great because you, when you're going through the classes, you have an instructor, you have a set goal, you try not to break the rules, you're trying not to find your own expression, but at the same time, you're dying to do those kind of things. And some of it comes out naturally, but some of it, you know, that you can push further. So in fellowship, now is my time to kind of really just do things that, that my way. So I'll take all the knowledge that I learned from all the instructors, put it in the air, scramble it around, and hopefully something comes out. And that's what I'm trying to see. So I'm using this year to figure all that out. Great. Thank you so much, Scott. And have, have fun with your, your current, <laughs> your current um, canvas. Thank you. Bye.